Hey everybody, this is Stephanie from Apex Languages and allow me to introduce you to a new type of video, ornery orthography. Ornery is a fun kind of folksy informal word that means annoyingly stubborn. Orthography is the division of grammar that deals with things like letters and spelling and punctuation. Those can all get a little frustrating sometimes, right? especially English spelling, oh, what a nightmare. So today, with this video, I want to talk with you a little bit about spelling and how it affects pronunciation. And then next week, we're going to start a new unit all about punctuation. We still have one group of pronouns to talk about, relative pronouns, I haven't forgotten about them, but that will get us started on a whole new unit about clauses like relative clauses and I wanted to have a strong foundation with basic punctuation, periods and commas and semicolons, oh my, before starting that long journey. Anyway, that's the plan in a nutshell, in short. Get it, got it, good. Back to today, let's talk about everyone's favorites, silent E's and double letters. Silent E. So many words in English end with a weird E that doesn't make any sound. Is it just along for a free ride? Or maybe it's there because it looks pretty? Why is that E there? As a linguist, I believe that there is a logical explanation for everything we find in language, even when it doesn't seem to make any sense. Most of the time, that meaning is just buried under centuries of obscure cultural history. Fortunately, we do not need to dig that deep to find out some reasonable explanations for the silent E phenomenon. The problem is that there's just not one answer. There are several. And choosing the right one to make sure that your pronunciation checks out accurately can still boil down to a random guessing game. Sorry. Nonetheless, understanding what an E at the end of a word can mean will help you out more often than not. Here, I'll talk about six uses it may have in English. First of all, E softens certain letters when it comes after them. Hard C, K, becomes soft like an S. S. Hard G, G, becomes soft like a J, J. And even TH turns into its voice form, um, which is a little longer. So for example, Mike versus mice, Mike, mice, hug versus huge. So hug, huge, and teeth versus teeth. All right, so you see here that how that's longer. Teeth are the things in your mouth. Teeth is the verb for when babies grow their teeth. Same thing with bath and bathe. The verb form has the voiced TH, and so you need an E at the end of that, bath versus bathe. Silently, silent E also combines with the letter L to create an additional syllable O. That gives us Able, middle, and eagle, to name a few. Many students struggle with this, but the thing to remember about LE is that when it follows another consonant, like in these examples, it's better to think of it as O instead of L. It's not a bl or mid L, but a O, mid O. So just switch the two letters around and that should help you with your pronunciation. Next, in English, we don't like to end words with the letters I, U, or V. Hi is an exception, but that's meant to be informal anyway. Thus, if you see words like die, do, or dive, just remember that they are like that for largely aesthetic reasons. In this case, it is because we think that they look better that way, I guess. The next group, however, is a little more practical. 
Adding a silent E can help avoid confusion between two words that may sound similar but have very different meanings. Bye versus bye is a great example of this. You know, goodbye and then uh, I live by the river, this was written by me. Very different words and yet very common. You want to distinguish between them. It also appears often when the plural form of one word is a little too much like the regular form of another one, as is the case with teas and teas, right? They sound exactly the same, but tea is in what you drink, right? If uh, you, there are several teas to choose from when you're having your tea party uh, versus teas, uh, you make fun of someone, you try to annoy them, that's a verb, all right? So very similar, we add the E to avoid confusion. Finally, there's the just because pile. Like I said before, words in this group probably have some sort of logical explanation for why they need the E, but it's buried so far back in history that it's just easier to memorize them and move on with your life. Fortunately, they're very common words, so that shouldn't be a problem. For example, where, are, and shoe. You thought we were done, but I saved the best for last. Silent E can make the previous vowel say its name. This is probably the most common reason for a silent E, the, the one that you should try first when you see a new word. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at our examples. Can versus cane. You see that when I add the E, the previous vowel, in this case the A, changes from a short A, A, to a long A, A. The long vowels in English say their name. So cane, A is an A, right? That's what we mean by say its name. Okay, so can, cane them versus theme so them a eh, eh, short vowel theme is saying its name e because you have the silent e at the end okay din that's a lot of noise versus dine okay i i versus i din dine glob like a glob of glue a big chunk of glue versus globe so, ah, ah versus o, oh, glob, globe. And then us versus use, okay? Uh versus you, you. See how that little e can make a big difference? Completely change the way you say the word. That brings me to what I wanted to say about double letters. By double letter, all you have to do is look in the word letter itself, those two T's. There are many languages where two T's means you really have to emphasize the T. That makes sense, letters. Um, but we actually do the opposite in English. Uh, a lot of times, especially with the T, we have the letter, letter or butter, okay? Where it's not even a T anymore. Sometimes it's just a little glottal stop or it's a, so it's not even a letter, okay? So then why do we have the T's? What is their purpose if they're not there for emphasis? The T's are actually there to counteract the silent E. If you have the word let, well, then you add ER, people might be confused and start saying leet. The double T tells me to make the previous vowel short again, basically to ignore what the silent E did. So here we've got our can versus cane again. Well, cane uh, is what an old person uses to help them walk, but if you start hitting someone with that walking stick, that's called caning them, that's a verb. So to cane someone is to hit them with a stick. Fun, fun vocabulary. Okay, so can, cane, caned, but canned. 
You see, when we add the double ends, all of a sudden, the long A becomes short again. Can, canned. Cane, caned. Okay, so can, cane, caned, canned. The double ends make the vowel short. Doesn't have anything to do with the ends. It just has to do with the vowel ahead of it, the pronounce, how you pronounce those vowels, okay? Another example, din, dine. A lot of people see these next two words and they get confused, okay? But the, the third word is diner. That's a restaurant where you go eat your dinner. So the diner dined for dinner with a lot of din. <laughs> um, so you could see dine, dine er still has that e sound, but when you add the n, it becomes short again. Din dinner. Okay. Um, so din dine diner dinner. Long i on diner, short i on dinner. Finally, this one is very near and dear to students' heart. A writ was a very old legal document, so you're not going to see that anymore, but, but there's proof that there is a, a word with a short I, writ, okay? From that, we have our, well, probably from the verb write, we got writ, but in any case, writ becomes write when you add an E to it. And then uh, the past tense of write is wrote. So uh, it's a different vowel, but the silent E is doing the same thing, okay? It's making you say the letter's name. So write, you say the I's name with a long I. Wrote, you say the O's name with a long O, but the past participle of write is written. See, you don't even pronounce that T, Writ, written. <laughs> but the I's short because of the double T's. So write, written. I write, I wrote, I have written. Okay, that's the trick. A lot easier than you thought, right? What are we gonna do to practice today? Oh, how can I torture you guys? Can you think of other examples of words that change because of silent E or double letters? So this one isn't so much a writing challenge, write, you know, post in the comments or, or send me an email, of course, but I don't really want you to write sentences with this. It's all about pronunciation. But try to come up with pairs of words, or I had four words that were connected to each other, okay? What are other examples that show the pronunciation changes because of that silent E or when the letters are doubled, okay? That would be a good challenge for you. It was certainly a challenge for me. <laughs> I'll leave you to it then. Thank you, as always, for watching. Check out more videos at apexlanguages.com. We've got grammar, we've got vocabulary, we've got Spanish, and uh, we've got something else new coming up uh, next week. So make sure you, you check in, all right? Until then, have a wonderful Happy, healthy, and safe rest of your day. Take care.